In this screencast, I want to illustrate how to use slow networks and network flows to solve problems that may not obviously be represented as a network flow. So here's the problem I want to start with. It uh, concerns bipartite graphs. So remember what a bipartite graph is. It's a graph whose vertices can be partitioned into two disjoint sets so that every edge connects a vertex in one of the sets to a vertex in the other set. So here I've got the two sets are V and U, and the only edges go from U to V or V to U. There are no edges that are total where both vertices are in U or both vertices are in V. Turns out a graph is bipartite if and only if it does not have a cycle of odd length. You might stop and try to convince yourself that that's true. It's pretty easy to see if it has a cycle of odd length that it can't possibly be bipartite. So another way to think about bipartite graphs is that they're too colorable. In other words, if we take our two subsets, V, and make it one color, and the other subset, U, and make it the other color, it's pretty obvious that if it's bipartite, it's too colorable. So this leads us to the following theorem. A graph is too colorable, if and only if it's bipartite, if and only if it has new two odd cycles. So now we can talk about the problem itself that we want to solve using network flows. A matching in a graph is a subset of the edges with the property that no two edges share a vertex. So in this picture, the red edges are a matching, and they match 5 to 9 and 4 to 8. So this is a matching of cardinality 2. Generally, what we're going to want to find is a maximum cardinality matching. In other words, it's a matching with the largest number of ed edges. Maximum matchings always exist, but are not unique. Now, the terminology is a little, can be confusing. You need to distinguish between maximum matchings, which I've just defined, which is the largest cardinality, versus maximal matchings, which maximal matching means, matching means it's not possible to add an additional edge. Now, it's important to note, most of the pictures so far have just been of bipartite graphs, but you can have a matching in just a general graph. It doesn't need to be bipartite. And in particular, um, the distinction between maximum and maximal is a little clearer if we're working with non-bipartite graphs. But the problem we're going to focus on is bipartite, uh, maximum matching in bipartite graph. So I don't want to spend too much time on this uh, other than to make clear the uh, distinction between maximum and maximal. So here's an example of a bipartite graph, and notice that here's one maximum matching, and here's another one. So they're not always unique, but a maximal, in fact, a maximal matching in this general graph, uh, a maximal max matching here has a cardinality one. You can't add either of these edges, but it's pretty clear that a maximum match matching here would be the two end edges, and so that would have cardinality 2. Perfect matching means all the vertices are matched. So, for instance, here's a bipartite graph. Notice that U has to have the same cardinality of V and in order to possibly have a perfect matching. Now, the maximum matching problem for a bipartite graph can be solved without doing using flow networks. Um, and, but the solution, one thing to notice about the solution, which I'm just going to skim over, is that, in fact, it, it has some similar characteristics to the solution uh, using augmenting paths for flow networks. So in order to talk about how the solution could be generated, we're going to talk about free vertices. So those are vertices that are unmatched. So in this picture... 1, 2, and 3 are unmatched, 6 and 7 are unmatched, and 10 is unmatched. And if they're unmatched or free vertices, then it's possible that the matching can be increased. And obviously, in this particular picture, um, there are lots of edges that you could add to potentially get to a maximum matching. Obviously, you can in immediately increase the matching by just connecting two free vertices, assuming there's an edge. So, for instance, 1 and 7 
that would increase the size of the matching. So one way to find a maximal matching is to use augmenting paths, which is a familiar concept from network flows. And it looks a lot the same. Basically what you do is you find a path um, for the matching M that you're starting with. It's a path from a V vertex in V and a vert free vertex in U whose edges alternate between edges not in M and edges in M. And the length of the augmenting path is always odd. So what there's going to be is there's going to be an even number of edges in the matching and an odd number of edges that are not in the matching. So what you do then is add to M the odd numbered path edges and delete from it the even numbered path edges and that increases the matching size by one. So in one edge path between two free vertices is a special case of an augmenting path. So here's an example. Okay, we have a matching that we're starting from which has four edges in it. One to seven, two to six, four to eight, and five to nine. And we're going to find the augmenting path. So what's an augmenting path? Well, it's illustrated by these uh, blue edges. So we could start at 3, we take a, an edge that's not in the matching to 8, then we take an edge that's in the matching to 4, we take an um, edge that's not in the matching to 9, in the matching to 5, and then an um, edge that's not in the matching to 10. So this has 3 edges that are not in the matching and 2 edges that are in the matching. So then we augment the path. When we augment the path, we put this edge in, take this edge out of the matching, this edge in, this edge out, this edge in, and we end up with that matching. And in this particular situation, it's both a maximum matching and a perfect matching. So without going any, into any details, we start with some initial matching, find an augmenting path, and we keep doing that using some kind of breadth-first search method, just like we did with flow networks, until we can't find an augmenting path. And then we terminate and return the last matching, which is maximum. Very reminiscent of network flows. So why not use network flows? And here's how you do it. We take our bipartite graph with our edges, and we assign to each edge a capacity of 1, and we direct all the edge from edges from one of the sets to the other set. Doesn't matter, that's arbitrary. We'll direct them from V to U in this picture. And then we'll put in a sink. And again, the, uh, be all edges from the vertices in U to the sink. And there'll be edges from the source to all the vertices in V. Then we can just run the shortest augmenting path algorithm on this flow network and determine the max flow. And from the values of the xij, we can tell which edges from v to u have a flow of 1 on them. And that will give us the maximum matching. How do we know it's the maximum matching? If it weren't, then back in the bipartite case, so just taking this part of the picture, if it weren't maximum, then there would be an augmenting path, which would go between the sets V and U, U using edges that aren't in the matching, alternating with edges that are in the matching. And if you think about it, that would just be, then transform that into the flow network, and that would be an augmenting path in the flow network, which would contradict that we found the maximum flow. So this is a nice, simple example that shows how you can take a problem, namely, maximum matching in a bipartite graph and transform it into a max flow problem and then just run our known algorithm on it and get the answer to the original problem back in the bipartite graph. This is a example of a concept called reduction, problem reduction. And what we've done is we've reduced the bipartite matching problem to a max flow problem. So in conclusion, Network flow problems allow us to find maximum bipartite matchings fairly easily just by using shortest augmenting path algorithm or some one of the other 
more efficient algorithms. Many problems can be reduced to network flow problems. So having a good understanding of flow networks and network flow algorithms can be very useful for you in terms of being able to model other problems and finding their solution easily using all the machinery that's associated with network flow problems. Problem reduction is an incredibly powerful technique. It's both useful in helping us use machinery that we have for solving one problem to solve another problem, but it's also very powerful when we're looking at difficult problems and studying NP completeness later on in the sequence of these screencasts. So if you'd like some practice here, here's an example of a problem that can be reduced in network flow. Think about it in some department, an academic department, there are maybe n sections of courses that need to be offered in m instructors, and each instructor has a list of courses that he or she can teach, and every instructor can teach at most three courses during a term. And your goal is to find if there's a way to allocate the courses to the instructors subject to those constraints so that all the courses can be covered by the instructors. So try to develop a, network, a flow network model whose maximum flow solution solves this problem.